good afternoon. I would like to thank the organizers uh, for um, I was asked uh, to, talk, to talk to you about Flavesens uh, Doré um, and the state of the art. Uh, we know that we have increased our knowledge of the pathogen a lot in terms of both uh, the leaf hopper and uh, the pathogen. I can't uh, really um, go into details, uh, but uh, I will uh, make reference to, to various publications and works uh, performed within the framework of uh, this project. And uh, you also can have access uh, to the database uh, that mentioned by Fanny, and you will find the details for all the products. First of all, what is FD? It is. Um, as is the case uh, for GTDs, uh, of a complex, it is a complex relationship between the plant, the vector insect, uh, and the infectious agent, uh, the carrier. And you can have several insects that act as carriers. Uh, and uh, the interaction between these three elements uh, will uh, uh, cause uh, the epidemic uh, um, character of uh, Flavesson's Doré, which can uh, spread more or less uh, rapidly. Here you see a vineyard uh, with uh, uh, FD symptoms. Uh, we will have uh, more detail uh, and more details in the database, of course. Uh, also with material coming from our conferences, so I will not dwell upon the symptoms. Uh, it is a reservoir of knowledge which is made available to you, so use it. But very rapidly, uh, we do have symptoms which uh, are not enough, though, to tell whether it is FD or not. We can't be sure. But if you bring together a number of these uh, symptoms, uh, then uh, you will be able to better address the matter in the lab. I talk about uh, um, red varieties. It is easier to identify uh, flowers and dorai there. You have uh, a yellow leaves, uh, of course, uh, and uh, that is shared, though, with other uh, diseases. Here we have, in general, FD. And yet, the expression of the discoloration is different, diff different, and it is determined by the ribs of the leaves. Here, for instance, we had a, a well-defined discoloration in, Als in Alsace, and then leaves roll downwards and turn cracking. Uh, they scramble, uh, and uh, they are very fragile. If you take the leaves in your hand, you will find that they are a bit thicker, and they yet they are very frail, and they crash easily, and they get and they scramble. So, uh, in this way, you can also um, distinguish between the typical rolling of other diseases, where the ribs remain green, uh, because here you have colored ribs as well, and then. Another important thing is that there is very little uh, lignification of uh, the ensemble des feuilles. Vous voyez également the shoots. There can be uh, shoots which uh, are not uh, lignified and which uh, also um, uh, they also. Um, miss leaves, uh, and then they have uh, leaf rolling. As for the disease uh, itself, uh, Flavesson's Doré belongs uh, to the so-called yellow diseases of the vine. And as I told you, based on the symptoms uh, per se, you can't distinguish uh, between FFD and Bois Noir. The only way you can do uh, you can tell, actually, is making a laboratory analysis which will use PCR and which will uh, identify uh, the pathogenic agent. And uh, there are different expressions uh, based on the cultivars, on the varieties 
the uh, rootstock, the vit in Vitis Americana, um, uh, that rootstock is uh, symptomless. And that is, uh, of course, significant. Let's uh, see an example with reference to Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. A number of years ago, studies were performed and infections uh, were controlled with the same quantities of phytoplasm. We saw that uh, in Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon, after the pathology had spread, by measuring uh, the uh, phytoplasms in the plant, Merlot had less phytoplasm than uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. And uh, there, could, there can be a difference of 30 times uh, in terms of quantity between the two. Of course, this has repercussions on the symptoms in that Merlot expresses symptoms uh, less uh, than Cabernet Sauvignon. It's not a question of being more or less acceptable. It is a question of expression of the symptoms. And rootstocks are absolutely asymptomatic. Uh, we need to remember that because it is so difficult to manage the treatment as a consequence uh, and also uh, the disease. Now, there is one main insect uh, that acts as a carrier that is known because it uh, carries uh, the phytoplasm from one plant uh, to the other, and it is a leaf hopper. And this is a more complex uh, element because we do know that there are several carriers that are capable of uh, transmitting the phytoplasm of uh, um, Flavisson's Doré. But for the time being, we know that there is one dominant uh, insect, uh, that is this uh, leaf hopper, which is called uh, Scaphoideus titanus. Uh, and you see here the picture that was uh, taken by a colleague. It is an adult insect, uh, magnified, of course, and easy to uh, identifying that there are two tips uh, at the extremities of the wings. Uh, while it, when you uh, see it uh, live, so to say, it is so lively, it hops from one plant to the other, so much so that you don't actually recognize it and you don't, uh, you're not able to identify it. This uh, uh, insect that hops from one plant to the other is uh, a Stinging, sucking insect. Uh, it uh, feeds uh, in vine vessels in the phloem. So you can. Uh, um, by the way, we know that males and females have different behaviors uh, from this viewpoint. Uh, recently, researchers uh, state that perhaps a Scaphoideus titanus uh, is a potential vector of uh, Xylella. This is a species which has one generation for, yeah, it is a univoltine species. And it has one cycle on the vine. It lays eggs on the, on the vine. They develop on the plant. And in the adult um, life, they continue living on the vine where they reproduce themselves. And then different larvae uh, stages can be observed, especially in the um, on the leaves, uh, which is one of the ways by which uh, we can control the presence of this insect. This is a, an old map, and yet uh, it tells uh, about uh, the uh, limits uh, of uh, spreading of the disease. Basically, Scaphoides titanus is present, though, in all these areas. We know that then when we have a warm winter, this leaf hopper is not capable of uh, reproducing nicely, while when you have uh, short summers, again, uh, the cycle is not complete. I will not go back to the details of the uh, life cycles of this uh, leaf hopper. I tell you only that each larva state lasts, say, 10 days. And so when we apply strategies and make treatments, we always need to focus on uh, the larvae 
because uh, this has uh, an incidence uh, in terms uh, of uh, using uh, the treatments uh, at, uh, at best. So um, it is better to um, it is better to intensify treatment when you have uh, several larvae and uh, and uh, other moments are less pro are less beneficial. Uh, the bacterium is uh, a, a wall-less uh, uh, organism. The phytoplasm is carried by this leaf hopper. You see a section of the leaf hopper which is feeding on the plant. It uses the phloem where the phytoplasm is developed. It injects, it, it swallows the, um, the, the, the phytoplasm and it is not only suction that uh, occurs, uh, in that the phytoplasm goes through the digestive system, multiplies in the intestine, in the bowels, and uh, then um, proliferates in the hemolymph and gets uh, to uh, the um, uh, glands uh, uh, where it uh, multiplies further and uh, in the salivary glands. After it has been uh, in swallowed uh, by the phytoplasm, be it a larva or an adult, the uh, leaf hopper is infective and it remains so for the rest of its life, uh, but it, it, the, the, this is not transmitted to the eggs, which is very important, which means that there is one cycle per year, as we saw, but uh, once uh, the population has disappeared at the end uh, of uh, the year, it uh, spends uh, the winter under uh, the uh, canes of the uh, wine and cannot uh, reach uh, the eggs uh, because eggs are free of phytoplasm, which means that every year the leaf hoppers uh, after hatching get affected again on the plant uh, that remained in the vineyards. This is an interesting piece of, of, of information for the management. Recently, EFSA um, made a, a study which is of utmost interest. Specifically, I would like to refer to this map which makes us understand the different possible scenarios. Scaphoideus titanus is uh, the vector, the carrier, and uh, it is a common uh, leaf hopper basically in all vineyards in Europe, while uh, phytoplasm, flavescence doree, is less common, is less widespread than the insect, which means that insects are not a limiting factor for the uh, diffusion of the disease. I mentioned PCR earlier on, which is the gold standard today. There are different genotypes of uh, phytoplasm which uh, were identified and they are interesting uh, in order to identify the origin of epidemics uh, and also their stages. Furthermore, this uh, influences uh, uh, the management uh, of alternative or the, the behavior of alternative insects uh, which act as carriers. I will not enter the details of this because there was some a very thorough uh, contribution about this in Conegliano. If you want uh, to know more about uh, this, just uh, gain access to the database and you will find all the material. These vectors do not hop from one plant to the other. Phytoplasm is present in clematis and other plants, and there you find a high, uh, p high uh, percentages of the f high um, rates of phytoplasm. Clematis uh, oftentimes uh, are infected up to 30 percent, and. Uh, Uh, that is in older as uh des plantes uh, uh, des plantes qui ne sont pas de la vigne donc exter helms and uh, um, this phytoplasm uh, therefore is carried from uh, the 
other trees to the vineyard. The point is to know how often that uh, happens. And uh, we also need to know whether Scaphoidae stiftanus uh, can, uh, com- can carry several types of phytoplasms and whether it can bring uh, the infection from one vineyard to the, to the, to the other. There is work on in progress about this. In other cases, we also uh, heard uh, um, Mauro Germini talk about this. A number of wild plants act as a reservoir for FD phytoplasm, and uh, I don't want to dwell upon that. I can't either. But anyway, the wild uh, vines are reservoirs for uh, the FD. You have uh, to manage reservoirs properly. And uh, abandoned uh, vineyards often are vitis vinifera, and they can uh, be infected. Maurizio investigated this matter, so you have their uh, information in the knowledge reservoir. The phytoplasm of Flavicens uh, Doré uh, was possibly present in Europe before Scaphoideus titanus was introduced from North America. And uh, it was imported uh, um, with plants that had been imported uh, to fight uh, um, phylloxera. And in that case, so also Scaphoides titanus arrived. Without uh, dwelling upon details, uh, I can move on and uh, I ask a question. Having said that, is it possible to control FD? Uh, there is n- no way to cure the uh, vine unless uh, you do a hot water treatment uh, um, of the mother plant at the foot of the mother plant. And the first thing is uh, the um, management of uh, the uh, carrier itself, the vector, which is something which is done all over Europe. Let's now talk about uh, organic uh, viticulture. In uh, a recent study, which we performed in France, we evidenced that if you use natural pyrethrum, which is uh, uh, allowed in organic uh, viticulture, irrespective of the strategy with one, two, or three treatments uh, uh, in the larvae and to the larvae, there is always a huge variability of uh, effectiveness of natural uh, pyrethrum. On average, uh, is 60 to 80 percent of average efficacy, but the range is huge. And it goes uh, uh, and it changes from year to year and from area to area or within the same area. So, um, a post treatment control of the population is extremely important. What can we do, um, therefore, and what can we draw as a conclusion? Well, early treatment of uh, the nymphal populations uh, are um, to be privileged uh, when compared uh, to treatments of adults, uh, and two successive sprayings uh, are preferable to one, because otherwise you have too much variability. And then you have the treatment of uh, vine plants uh, in uh, hot uh, water and uh, of the uh, cut in hot water for the time period uh, which has been indicated. You can also have biological control with other parasitoids uh, which uh, are captured uh, in a European vineyard uh, or uh, in um, the area of origin of Scaphoideus. Uh, We saw that uh, these uh, uh, parasitoids are, uh, to some extent, effective. They attack the larvae of uh, Scaphoideus, uh, but uh, the um, rate of parasitism is too low. And you would need a huge amount of these insects uh, in order to have the right populations and manage Scaphoideus. Uh, So actually, it is not a feasible solution. 
Another possibility is that of the mating disrupt disruption, which entails using vibrations, because leaf hoppers only use vibrations to communicate. They don't have other systems. And also, in this case, I would like uh, to refer to a very interesting publication by Valérie Mazzoni. And uh, um, I invite you to read the, the paper uh, prepared. Molecular inhibitors uh, would inhibit the passage of phytoplasm from the bowels uh, to the rest of the body of uh, the leaf hopper. And then we have push-pull techniques, uh, which though entail a number of problems, uh, because uh, if uh, the leaf hopper is drawn away, drawn out uh, of a certain plot, it goes uh, elsewhere. So uh, this means that you are spreading the problem. And then new technologies, especially air, air drones uh, or modeling, uh, for the time being, they are not very widespread. But for instance, modeling is used uh, in Switzerland. In the, Mauro Germini talks about that uh, in another uh, publication. And uh, it is used as a system modeling in Switzerland. And then drones. Drones uh, are mentioned all the time. We must know that for the time being, even though some companies uh, offer this as uh, an effective uh, solution to identify FD, uh, that has not been validated scientifically yet in terms of identifying the disease. Uh, studies are in progress, actually quite a number of them. They are making hyperspectrum. Uh, measurements which would permit identifying not only flavescence doré but also powdery mildew and downy mildew. Uh, they are still at the beginning, though, uh, and yet they do exist. We are, we have works on this. Collective and individual monitoring, therefore, is a fundamental pillar in trying to control this disease. When these uh, leaf hoppers hatched, uh, actually uh, they are healthy. They are not infected. They get infected on the plant, which means uh, that it is fundamental to find and identify plants with symptoms. If you deprive uh, the uh, insect uh, rapidly of uh, the source of infection, even though you have the leaf hoppers on the plant, they no longer are a danger. And then there is the destruction of uh, the diseased uh, plant. So you have to destroy them. You can't do anything but that. And then you also can reduce uh, the populations of Scaphoideus titanus when very much present in an epidemic area. and. Uh, If there is no phytoplasm, though, you, you can for, forget about the, the presence uh, of scaphoideus. Uh, you should use only healthy plant material, of course. Uh, with reference to prophylactic uh, complementary measures, uh, we can uh, implement uh, control methods, for instance, in Burgundy, using different methods. And I invite you to read uh, the publications about this, again, in the Knowledge Reservoir. Thank you.